This photo of Philip Noble and Ross Munro playing in the dirt as children looks normal at first glance. What isn't immediately apparent is that they are actually playing in asbestos dust. Philip and Ross's asbestos exposure would lead them to die from mesothelioma before reaching 40. Their lungs would have become cancerous and feel as if they were filled with concrete, and their quality of life was devastated before they passed away. Philip and Ross are just two amongst thousands of people who have died from asbestos-related diseases after living in Wittenoom, Western Australia, when its asbestos mine operated. Once filled with mine workers and their families, it now stands as a ghost town. The site of the worst industrial tragedy in Australian history, Wittenoom leaves behind a lethal legacy that was entirely preventable. Asbestos was heavily used during World War II to fireproof buildings and clothing, and sugar turned mining company CSR predicted demand would only increase. After buying out Lang Hancock's mining leases in the Wittenoom area during the 1940s, CSR began building the township of Wittenoom itself at the head of a gorge, with the hopes of making their riches through asbestos mining. They set up operations through their subsidiary, Australian Blue Asbestos, and had no previous mining experience. They took no advice from other mining companies on how to run their operations, nor did they consult health authorities to help safeguard the health of their miners. The Western Australian Government gave CSR every assistance to help make the Wittenoom project prosper, hoping to start a mining boom to rival the gold industry. Wittenoom became the largest town in the Pilbara region, with 20,000 people calling it home during its lifetime. Much of Wittenoom was made up of migrants fleeing Europe in the wake of World War II, with hopes of riches and dreams of a new and better life in Australia. Just a couple of years as a miner in Wittenoom could pay enough to set someone up for the rest of their lives, but none were told of to the dangers to their health they risked while working there. Asbestos was everywhere in Wittenoom before even stepping foot into its mines. The air was so thick with dust in some spots that you could part the fibres with your hands. It was used in all buildings and roadways and spread around town to try and stave off the oppressive summer heat. Even the school playground contained asbestos, laid over gravel to protect children from injuries. Inside the mines themselves, workers would be subject to cramped and uncomfortable conditions. There was next to no ventilation and they breathed in asbestos constantly throughout the day. And anyone unfortunate enough to have to wash a miner's clothes after work would also be prone to inhaling dust. After being milled, the asbestos would be placed in hessian bags and trucked away for export overseas. These bags were highly porous and often tore during transport or fell off the back of trucks, leading to the bags decaying years later and exposing the asbestos inside. When it came to safety, CSR mainly focused on preventing industrial accidents like rock falls and equipment mishaps, rather than the risks of asbestos itself. And the health risks of asbestos were known during Wittenoom's operations after experiences overseas were reported in medical literature. CSR chose to continue mining operations regardless, without any measures to prevent asbestos inhalation by workers. Dust extractors were eventually installed at Wittenoom, but these only shifted dust from the bowels of the mine to the mill and offices nearby. It would take the involvement of Dr Jim McNulty in the mid-1950s for the true extent of health problems in Wittenoom to start being exposed. After examining x-rays of mine workers with clear signs of asbestos-induced lung disease, after only two years in the mines, McNulty travelled to Wittenoom to inspect operations. He was deeply disturbed by what he found there. The poor dust control, the abysmal conditions within the mine, and the overall lack of care exhibited by management. Asbestos dust was so thick in the air that it clogged to the orifices of sampling machines used to measure dust levels, resulting in inaccurate readings. When McNulty confronted CSR with his concerns over the high dust levels and overall lack of safety protocols, executives claimed that all of his worries about dust were complete bull dust. C 
CSR finally shut down Wittenu mining operations in 1966, with many people moving away after the risks of asbestos gained greater public awareness. It would take until 1988 before any former workers affected by asbestos started being victorious against CSR in court. The company has since paid out tens of millions of dollars to those that have contracted asbestos-related diseases from their time living and working in Wittenu, with some people dying before seeing victory. It is estimated that over 2,000 workers, residents and even occasional visitors to the town have died from asbestos-related diseases. And given that it can take between 20 and 50 years for symptoms to show, the number of deaths is likely to get higher. In 2006, the Western Australian government finally closed down Wittenoom. All power, phone and government services have been terminated and all signs showing the way to Wittenoom have been removed. It may be the most contaminated place in the Southern Hemisphere and it will never be safe for people to live in again. About 3 million cubic metres of asbestos tailings lie in Wittenoom Gorge alone, which continue to be eroded and dispersed through the countryside by water and wind. Despite these risks, tourists keep visiting Wittenoom and taking photos of themselves amongst asbestos tailings and can inadvertently spread the dust further in their cars after leaving the town. And there is still a small number of people living in Wittenoom itself. As of 2021, a bill has been introduced to the Western Australian Parliament to buy out the last remaining properties in Wittenoom. If this bill is passed, the buildings will be demolished to deter future tourists from visiting the area and prevent more lives from being lost to asbestos. In the words of the Asbestos Diseases Society of Australia, the death toll from Wittenoom won't stop until the visitors stop. <laughs>